the Superboat fleet will fight to take the biggest bite out of the Big Apple. Leading the field in excess, piloted by John Garrett, has 2,178 points with victories in San Francisco and Miami. In the second spot, Superboat rookie Chuck Norris from the Popeye's Diet Coke has a win in Long Beach and trails by only 324 points. Moving up in the standings to third, Superboat world champion Peter Markey in the Little Caesars Pizza has three top five finishes and is the only deep B within striking distance of our leader, just 362 points out of the lead. Dropping to the fourth position, 455 points back, Don Johnson in the Team USA needs a win here today to keep his Superboat national championship dream alive. And the winningest Superboat driver in the history of the sport, Al Copeland, returns to the water in possibly the fastest Superboat ever. Only one boat can be national champion, and time is running out for the contenders. The competition will be fierce as the offshore professional tour hits the waters off Manhattan. ESPN. The 1990 Ultra Slim Fast New York Offshore Grand Prix. The New York Offshore Grand Prix is sponsored by Ultra Slim Fast. Ultra Slim Fast, the safe, healthy way to lose weight fast. Samsonite, our strengths are legendary. And by Popeye's famous fried chicken and biscuits. Everybody, I'm Art Ekman, and welcome to the sixth stop on the OPT Tour. We started in sunny California, went across the nation to Miami, then to New Orleans, then up to Lake Michigan in the Midwest. And now we're in the Big Apple, and joining me is Jim Henrik. And Jim, we saw in the opening of the show the Superboat class and how close it really is in some of the great boats, but the open classification is also very close. 437 points separate first through fourth with the narrowest margin being 51-point lead for Joe Mock and Dirty Laundry over the special edition team. Of course, that's John D'Elia. And with 500-plus points to get here for a first-place finish today, it's a very close race. Now, even though we're bobbing up and down in this very calm Hudson River, <laughs> we came off a course that was treacherous last week. Oh, six to eight-foot rollers. These boats had high attrition. A lot of boats got banged up. A lot of dollars in repair. But if they think they're going to get a vacation here on the river, here in New York City, they got a mistake coming because there's a lot of debris that'll float around. We could have a high attrition rate after all. And there are sneaky rollers. Looks calm. The bottom is uneven. All of a sudden, they'll launch off a wave, and they may be surprised. And it's a narrow course. Not much maneuverability. No, they're so long shoots with tight turns. Let's take a look at the course. This race marks a total departure for the offshore fleet as they will be racing on the Hudson River. And though it won't provide the kind of big water seen on the ocean or the Great Lakes, the Hudson River is long enough to offer high-speed challenges to the fleet with long, flat straightaways. The fleet will start north of the George Washington Bridge and sprint full throttle 10 miles to checkpoint number one, just south of the Tampa Z Bridge. Then it's a U-turn and another 10-mile pedal to the metal rush along the beautiful Atlantic Palisades that tower over the Hudson River. After checkpoint number two and another turn at checkpoint number three, it's a short dash to the finish line, completing a lap of 21 miles. Each class must make a predetermined number of laps to complete today's course. Seven laps for 147 miles for Superboat and open classes, five laps for 105 miles for Pro 1 and Pro 2. And Jim joining us, Rich Lures, a veteran offshore reporter who's worked on our telecast team in years past, joins us for the first time this season. Rich? Thanks, Art. Uh, the conditions out here at best are hazy and flat. It looks like it's going to be very, very calm, uh, very, very fast. There is an occasional roller, however, an occasional wake or hole in the water, if you will. And that uh, could be dangerous for these guys out here because uh, at maximum speeds, that's when you can get into trouble the fastest. Certainly, we hope that doesn't happen, but it looks like it's going to be a very high-speed race. 
It's been an exciting week in New York leading up to this great race. The pits are actually located right in the shadows of the World Financial Center, making a great show place of it, Jim. And you know, Art, we'll have thousands of unseen spectators looking out of those office windows. We asked Superboat leader John Garrett if he ever thought that he'd be in the lead in his first full season. No, but I don't even feel like, you know, we still have two races left and a lot of things can happen. Anybody can win. I can break. I can't. It's possible I might not finish. Uh, and I don't feel like I, I guess on numbers, I do have a big advantage, but I don't feel that way. Let's look at those numbers in Superboat standings, a 324-point lead for in excess over Popeyes. And Dirty Laundry in the open class has a 51-point margin over Special Edition. Popeyes High Risk has an 83-point lead over Risky Business in Pro 1. And it looks like a walk in Central Park instead of a stroll in a Hudson for great adventure in Pro 2. The boats are headed toward the milling area now, just north of the George Washington Bridge. The excitement is really starting to tune up. Talking to Harold Verslizer, who's the vice president of Ultra Slim Fast. And of course, you lose weight fast, boats go fast, but why would you team up? Well, we teamed up a while ago when Stuart Hyam, as you know, uh, got involved with us. And also, when we heard about the opportunity to host the New York race, Slim Fast Foods, being a New York-based company, was delighted to be able to participate. And also, you know, speed boats are fast, they're slim, they're sexy, and I think that's what Slim Fast is all about. Also, we want America to be healthy, thin, and sexy. The last few boats leaving the harbor now as we get ready for the Ultra Slim Fast New York OPT Offshore Grand Prix. We'll be back with the start of the race. And me, Tommy Lasorda. The starting lineup number one, Payless Eric's Reality, Charlie Marks. Jeff Sofer in the Bud Dry. Totally Awesome with Randy Garcia and Elliot Sutton. Chuck Norris and Popeye's Diet Coke. Lucky Strike, Phil Mashinsky behind the wheel. Ashiro Katami will drive the Super Hawaii. Team USA with Don Johnson and Richie Powers. Ike Batista driving the Spirit of the Amazon. Little Caesars Pizza with Pete Markey and Bruce Jenner. Greg Berry and Jack Clark team up in Jaguar Marine. Alan Feingold and Jerry Davis in Apache Kid. In excess with John Garrett and Ralph Martin. Popeye's Diet Coke, the new entry with Al Copeland and Bob Idoni. As they come down now for the start of this race, we want to mention that in the first Popeye's Diet Coke, which is not the new one, but the proven boat. It's Denny Hedger at the throttles as they come out now. Here's the start, and look at this start. Side by side, look at that water go. Peter Markey, the Little Caesars Pizza. You see him out in front right now. Team USA, though, is gathering momentum. Apache Kid on the inside. Caesars Pizza and Team USA. Look at the speed of this race here in the start. A catamaran versus a deep V right off the top. And here comes another catamaran, Spirit of the Amazon, as we go to Rich Lures in Chopper 1. And here comes Spirit of the Amazon. Ike Batista right to the lead at the first checkpoint. Number 63, boy, that boat can percolate. We're doing 110 miles an hour. Bobby Moore, Ike Batista, and here comes Don Johnson, Richie Powers, number 50. The movie star and the Brazilian national champion, nose to nose, what a war at the beginning. We're at 120 miles an hour. Who's got the speed? It looks like Johnson in the Team USA. This is going to be an extremely fast race. If we keep this up, we're gonna set a record that nobody will break. Spirit of the Amazon, the winner at Grand Haven. And Team USA, and look at the lead they have on the field, Jim. About a mile lead right now, and look at it. He's starting to extend about a five-boat length lead. Don Johnson and Richie Powers teaming up. Here is Dirty Laundry in the Million Area as we're going to start with the open class, and there are five entries in this class. Special edition, US-1, John D'Elia and his son, J.D. And the points leader, Dirty Laundry, number two. Gentry Turbo Eagle with Bob Kaiser and Errol Lanier. Slim Fast Recovery, Stuart Hayam. Nuri Sabunja in Chairman of the Board. Our ultra slim fast pace boat. You can see the wake of it up in the top of your screen as we're getting set for the start of this race. There's the buoy during laundry, but look at the lighter boat. Special Edition is taking the lead. The lighter boat getting the faster start with the bigger boats, Dirty Laundry and Chairman of the Board trying to catch up here at the start, Jim. As we look at Nuri Sabunja and Hurley Step teaming up in chairman of the board, you can see him at slot number two in between the wake of the US-1 and Dirty Laundry. One of the smallest in the fleet, the 35-foot Jaguar Cat out on top of the one of the biggest we're looking at right now, the 40-foot Q. Look at this Dirty Laundry. And I'll tell you one thing about Smitty Smith, he'll love this water. 
He really will as he starts to come up now on Special Edition. John DeLee and his son, J.D., setting the pace, but not for long. Here comes Dirty Laundry. It's going to be a battle. The DeLeas really need to get back into the points race, and they want to win here at New York. Dirty Laundry coming off three consecutive victories to take over the points lead in the open division. Joe Mock and Smitty Smith. They're about side by side, but here comes chairman of the board to join the party. Those Lamborghinis whining out as they want to take over the lead on the far side. And now we have a deck to deck side by side, neck to neck battle between Jody Laundry and chairman of the board at the top of your screen. As we look at our leader in the superboat class, Don Johnson, follow man Richie Powers with a big lead. It's going to be a fast lap. We'll be back to find out how fast in just a moment. One hundred and twenty-seven point three mile an hour for Team USA number fifty, a new single lap world record. And yesterday we visited with Team USA's Richie Powers inside the cockpit of that machine. I'm going to try and give you people a bird's eye view of what happens in the cockpit. I know that everybody has always asked me what exactly is your job and what goes on in the cockpit between Don Johnson and myself. Well, what I do is I, I monitor the tachometers, which we have our tachometers up here. I monitor our fuel pressure gauges. If at any point in time the fuel pressure drops below seven pounds, we have a major problem with the motor. Uh, down here are all the controls to start the motors. All the fuel pump switches must be turned on when you start the motors. Uh, once everything is started, I, I control the, the throttles with these pins. I put the pins in and such so that I actually operate two throttles with one handle. Both throttles are pinned together. Then the next most important thing that I have to look after is my trim controls. These are all hydraulic apparatuses, which uh, I have four stern drives hydraulic, uh, hydraulically operated, very much like your pleasure boats. Um, I have to coordinate those with these two red buttons, which are master controls for one side of the boat opposed to the other side of the boat. I have outside afterplanes, which controls the attitude of the boat on this, on this specter. And also I have tunnel tabs, which really corrects the, the lift of the tail on the boat. And um, the difference between running these stern drives trimmed all the way in to trimmed all the way out is probably 20 to 25 miles an hour. The absolute ultimate optimum position is marked on there with a level mark so that you know where your optimum is all the time and you pretty much stay in that area. So it's um, kind of a breakdown of what happens. Naturally, we have our speedometers, which uh, are very, very essential to keep your uh, average speeds up. He has been on that level mark, the optimum, the entire distance. A lot to think about, especially going at 127 miles an hour, Jim. I wonder if he's going to try to keep this pace up. Here's Payless Eric's reality. Charlie Marks has his craft up and playing well. After four disappointing appearances in that rough water of Lake Michigan, he really came through, Jim. He took a second place there. And Dan Campbell, the throttle man from Kansas City, Missouri, has four 1,000 horsepower inboard engines to work with. Speaking of throttle men, veteran Bobby Moore teaming up with Ike Batista, the Brazilian national champion. In only his second appearance in the United States, he won his first outing. He is a boat and a team to be reckoned with. Popeye's Diet Coke. Chuck Norris with a new throttle man for this race, Denny Hedger. But Hedger's worked very closely with Bob Idoni, who's now with Al Copeland in that new boat. Chuck Norris doing another great job. Bob Idoni really has kept this war horse together. Little Caesar's Pizza. They are really going with Pete Markey and Trey Martin. And they have a passenger who's never been in a boat before. It's downtown Julie Brown from MTV. Well, just to like hold everything that I can hold in place. This is the first time a woman's ever done this, right? First time a woman's been in a superboat ever, I believe. And so, you know, I'm going to be wearing double of everything because, you know, I don't want any of my parts displaced anywhere. Peter Markey coming into New York, third in the standings. They open the season with that fine second place finish in San Francisco and third in Long Beach. Here's Super Hawaii, Ashiro Katami, with the veteran throttle man Bill Soroyce, who for many years throttled for Al Copen and the Popeyes team. It's interesting what that wing does as they dance back and forth over the water. You can see them tilting back and forth. In excess now is back in seventh place with a battle on their hands with Apache Kid. Two Vs in the back of the pack. It's going to be interesting now to see if Apache Kid can really give in excess a challenge here in the early going. Interesting, they are both Apache Deep V Halls, Art Ekman. 
and they are pretty equal in horsepower. They're both running Mercury number sixes. Now, these boats are fast, but you got to give the catamarans today, the double hulls with the wing in between, the advantage in smooth water. They're just outrunning these deep Vs so far in this race. The points leader in excess. Their goal, of course, is to finish, but it worries me a little bit that Apache Kid is performing so well in the same water condition, Jim, because in excess is falling back. Al Copeland has a big smile on his face. He's back into action after some absence, and he has Bob Idoni beside him. Meanwhile, the Bud Dry boat with Jeff Sofer and Jeff McGee having some problems. August Bush IV was to be in the boat, but he broke his hand. Well, uh, we had an x-ray a couple days ago as a result of a water skiing accident about a month ago in my right hand, and I got one broken bone in it, and it's not quite ready to go yet, so I'd uh, rather be safe. Looking forward to uh, maybe Marathon now, right? Yes, we are. Our new boat will debut in uh, the Bud Dry in Marathon, and then, then on to Tampa. It was supposed to be ready for this race, but a last-minute uh, glitch uh, couldn't happen, so we're going to be racing a, a V-bottom here, and uh, somebody else will be driving the Bud Dry. Bud Dry picking up speed as this race goes underway, though. An announcement from turn two. We've got an accident down to the south end on the end of the back chute. Miss Behaven is down. And Art, our camera's caught it in slow motion. You can see the boat hooks to the left. Goes up on its right side, and Bill rolls completely upside down. Gene and Stacy Scoggins are okay. And, of course, our medical chopper and our rescue boat's on the scene, led by Dr. Matt Houghton. Driver and throttle man, okay. Boat will have to be towed back to shore. Quick rescue and great news, everyone is okay. Here's the 39-foot Cougar Cat with two 900 horsepower inboards. Chairman of the board in Nuri Sabunja. Let's go to Rich Lures now. He's got a great vantage point in that chopper. Uh, Nuri Sabunja and Hurley Step in the lead in the open class after one full lap of racing. Running incredible speeds at incredible RPMs with his Lamborghini-powered Cougar Cat. And just listen to the RPM level of these engines is much higher than anything else in the race so far. As you can hear from the throttles, there is no backing off going on at all. We're running 110 miles an hour right now. It's been a roller coaster year for Nuri Sabunja. Outstanding duels, but also disappointment. What was his biggest concern here in New York? Well, I'm really not worried about my competitors. I'm really worried about, they say, the logs and the debris in the water. And, you know, since it burned me once in San Francisco, that's what I'm afraid of most right now, today. And debris, a concern of many of the drivers because it's very difficult to control here on the Hudson River. Here's the battle for fourth, Jim. And we have quite a battle between Gentry Turbo Ego and Slim Fast Recoveries. They're almost side by side. You can see the boat at the bottom of your screen, a longer version of a catamaran, and he can take the water a little better. Stuart Hayam and Joey Impressia, though, they've been a successful team since they've entered this sport of offshore powerboat racing. Another great contrast of the lighter, shorter boat versus a heavier one. Now, going into the season, Bob Kaiser and the Gentry Turbo Ego had very high expectations for that new exotic-looking boat and his experience with Errol Lanier, but it just hasn't panned out. It's been a disappointing season so far. More action coming up, and we'll hear from Al Copeland, the innovator of the Superboat class, when we return. And he's been allowed to get into the cockpit for the first time this year. I'm absolutely happy to be back. I've been out almost two years now. And uh, it was actually a deal I made with the lenders not to race. And uh, uh, we've been talking to them, and they've decided to let me come back to racing, which I'm delighted to say. And if you win this race? If I win this race, I'll be <laughs> on top, man. I love it. I mean, to come back and win would be the most exciting thing I can imagine. This race marks the return of big-time offshore racing to the waters around Manhattan. In 1983, the fleet made its last appearance at the Chrysler Laser 200. The course ran through New York Harbor and out into the Atlantic. What made this race truly historic was the fact that it was the first race ever won by a superboat. Al Copeland's Popeyes had made its debut that same year and took its first overall victory here in New York. Copeland began his offshore racing career in open class with various deep V cigarettes and a scarab. 
In 1982, the Popeyes team began its winning tradition with their first win in Detroit. 1982 also saw Copeland and his then throttle man and crew chief Bill Soroy win the coveted Harmsworth Trophy for international competition. Copeland's desire for victory and his entrepreneurial spirit led him to the creation of the world's first superboat in 1983. The 50-foot Cougar catamaran tipped the scales at nine and a half tons and sported four 700 horsepower Merc Cruiser engines. The boat won here in New York on September 24th, 1983, with an average speed of only 82.8 miles per hour. As the victories piled up, the Popeye's Cougar Superboat became the winningest offshore boat in history, with 19 victories and four consecutive national championships. In 1985, the Popeye's offshore team went for the Miami to New York long-distance record, but came up short. The 46-foot Cougar Deep V made several appearances on the national tour, but was most often left at the docks in favor of the Big Cat. In 1986, the season opener, Al Copeland and Bill Soroy, arrived in Treasure Cay with a totally new concept race boat. Originally designed with a world straightaway record in mind, this 35-foot open-class wooden Cougar Cat was outfitted with six Mercury two-cycle, 300-horsepower outboard powerheads. Laid down on their sides, the engines were mated with a belt system to two Mercury surface drives. On their way to victory, the Popeye's Diet Coke became the first offshore powerboat in history to average over 100 miles an hour in competition with a 103.2 mile an hour average speed for the 150 mile race. The boat went on to set the still existing open class straightaway speed record at a blistering 138.5 miles an hour. In 1987, Copeland christened the newest weapon in the lethal Popeye's offshore arsenal, a space-age, fully enclosed 50-foot Getz catamaran. In 1988, the Giant made its racing debut in New Orleans. After working out the bugs, the behemoth took its first checkered flag in Sarasota. Al won four races and placed in the top five in the other four events in 1988 to win an unprecedented fifth consecutive national championship. In 1989, when Copeland bought Church's Fried Chicken for nearly $500 million, the lenders required Al to stay safely on the beach. After sitting out the entire 89 season and most of 1990, Al Copeland has made his long-awaited return to offshore racing in a hull that was the first to conquer the 100-mile-an-hour mark and set the open-class world straightaway speed record. A number of changes have been made to the old boat to make it new again. What we've done is... Uh to keep the, the profile real low, we've put the driver on one side and the sponson and the throttleman on the other and taken the cockpit out of the center and, and the motors would be behind each man and uh, they're supercharged motors and two mercury out drives versus eight power heads and two drives. So the power has changed and Al Copeland is back in the boat with a big smile on his face, Art. Not quite the speed that we anticipated, but many feel that he's courageous getting into this fast boat. Here's Team USA. Don Johnson and crew have certainly proved they can put the power to the water, but lasting the distance has been their nemesis, Jim. They've had problems all year long. It's been frustrating. What's the strategy for this and the last race of the year? At this point in the season, you just come and race and uh, have a good time and, uh, you know, see what happens. What about the disadvantages of a closed course like this? And of course, you get some dangers of debris and, and, and elements that uh, you might not have had in other areas. Well, uh, th th those are concerns to us. You know, we've, uh, we're in a tight course. We've got the, 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 uh, the turns are going to be a factor. The, uh, uh, the debris will be a factor. We're, you know, the other, how the other boats uh, handle the turns and stuff. Uh, uh, you know, when we get in a tight area like this, uh, the other racers become... Uh, become a, a factor in how uh, how you run your race you know we're we're, we're going to go out and run run fast and, uh, and uh, hopefully be successful they are running fast maybe too fast they have a 12 mile lead almost six minutes leading over popeyes diet coke and the payless eric's reality we're back there battling right now almost side by side for second place that payless eric's reality pulling out in front of popeyes diet coke We'll be back as the battle rages on in the Hudson River for the Ultra Slim Fast New York Grand Prix. Race early despite not winning a race, this father-son team could use a win here in New York to get the momentum down the stretch. This is my eighth year racing and it uh, seems every year we are always in second place, third place, uh, always comes down to the wire. 
This year in particular, we've got three particularly fast boats with recovery, with dirty laundry, with our boat special edition. We're in second place by 50 points. Recovery's right behind us. I've got the smallest, lightest, most removable boat in the open class. It's ideal for, for John D'Elia for special edition. My son, J.D., loves this kind of a race. I'd prefer a real ocean race. But this is what we got, and I love New York City, and I certainly hope we do well here, because if we don't do well here, then we may not have a real shot. But uh, we're always in there plugging, and we're going to give it our best effort, because I'm tired of the, the handle. Uh, second, second place, Johnny. I've got four second places this year, no first place, and that's not in character for special edition. I consider New York City our home port. We've got a lot of people coming down here that have never seen us race before. We're going to try to put on a good show, and a good, and a good show for John DeLee and special edition is a checkered flag. That's what we're looking for. Jim, the rough waters of Lake Michigan shook up this 35-foot cat, but the Hudson River is being kind to them right now. They're looking great. And they have a 38-second lead over Dirty Laundry. This boat here currently riding in second, Joe Mock and Smitty Smith. Look at this battle in Pro 1. We have two identical 32-foot skater cats powered by three Mercury outboard engines. And they are really battling in Pro 1 right now. It's risky business with Steve Dorsett and John Bruno. And they're coming up and battling this boat, the Popeyes High Risk, with John Ingle and Rick Felson. Jim, it's obvious that the water conditions are almost perfect for the Pro 1 division. And a man who knows these waters best, the throttle man, Rick Felson. And New York is... Uh always has a lot of debris in the water and I expect this race is going to be a driver's race more than a throttleman. Why do you say that? Well, you know, we're going to be going 100 miles an hour. You really can't avoid the debris. You can either take it up the tunnel of a catamaran or maybe just try to stay clear of it, but it's going to be very difficult. Uh, there's going to be a tremendous attrition rate. Uh, and there'll be drives breaking and hopefully we won't lose any boats, but uh, it's going to be a driver's race more than a throttleman's race. And look at this battle. It's now going to be risky business coming up in high risk, and they're going to battle just about side by side. Steve Dorsich has got that Popeye's high risk in his sight as they come down this back chute. Let's take a look now at Pro 2. Here's Conk Attack out in front. The S40 boat with Scott Cates and Craig Cates. They're doing a fine job, averaging about 87, well, a little bit over 87 miles an hour. They won in New Orleans, and they'd love to recapture that victory lane right now. Speaking of right now, here is our fifth place boat, Great Adventure, going into this second to the last race of the year with a comfortable lead in high points. Let's take a look at our leaderboard, Conk Attack, Skater Express, Thin Ice, Sea Fire Racing, and Great Adventure. And back now for Pro One. Look at that. Neck and neck. Risky business and Popeye's high risk. There's only 83 points difference in the points race here in Pro One. And these two leaders are just as close on the water right now. The boat at the top of your screen has a semi-cockpit protection, but Popeye's high risk has yet to have anything that'll deflect water should they nose in. Very dangerous. I wonder when they're going to change that. They're on a 95-mile-an-hour lap for these little boats, Jim. And they're very comfortable after suffering high attrition rate at Michigan, the last race where they bounce around, I think they welcome the smoother waters of the Hudson River. Yeah, I thought Rick Felson's comment was interesting. It is a driver's race, but there's not very much attrition here on the Hudson River so far. Back to the Superboat now, it's Team USA. Oh, they've just been burning up the track. Their average speed over 115 miles an hour. A less second spread of the Amazon third, Popeye's Diet Coke. Look at it, the open class, special edition, dirty laundry, and Gentry Turbo in the top slots. We'll be back on a beautiful day in New York City with more offshore Grand Prix action right after this. Superboat Division. Over him right now is Rich Lures. Don Johnson and Richie Bowers, number 50, are still flying. They haven't backed off an iota since this race started. They pulled an extraordinary lead. They are miles ahead of the second place boat in Superboat class. And they're still running upwards of 110 miles an hour. They backed out just a little bit as we roar by Yonkers in an amazing display of speed. And just like that, something went south in the engine compartment. Going northbound, they've slowed down significantly. That's what you fear for in days like this. You've got that kind of speed, and you boil them up. And boy, it sounds bad at this point. They've backed way down. 
So three incredible laps, laps at over 120 miles an hour. And right now they're down to maybe 30 miles an hour, just like that. If they can get started again, they can still win this race. They're still technically in the lead by a comfortable margin. But it doesn't sound good down there. Thank you, Rich, for that key observation. What a time to be right on top of the leader in that chopper. They have a 12-mile lead. The question is, can they keep it going? Can they stay ahead for four laps? They've got to be on pins and needles. And meanwhile, our second-place boat, Popeye's Diet Coke with Chuck Norris, is going to half the challenge and come up and try to make a race out of it. I asked Chuck Norris, what's the preparation difference between martial arts competition, powerboat racing, and acting? Uh, it's, it's the same. It's the same being very focused and concentrated in your racing, in your martial arts, in your acting. It all interrelates. You've got to be a very focused person to uh, be able to get through uh, a, a film or, or through a boat race. And, and I'm, you know, I train all the time. I train every day to try to maintain that focus and, and, and physical condition to, uh, to handle the rigors of this race. Right now, he's 12 miles behind the leader who is now limping. And maybe you'll have a chance to catch him. And this boat is also going to challenge Payless, Eric's Reality, Charlie Marks, and Dan Campbell. They also have a shot now with about three and three-quarter laps to go at 21 miles per lap. Third place and really pressing Popeye's Diet Coke, that's for sure. And Little Caesar's Pizza's down to the water jam. They've been down for a little while. They're now in the process of trying from the infield to start up again and get back into competition. Little Caesars Pizza still in that points race, and they'd love to get it going again. Here's the new entry, Popeye's Diet Coke with Al Copeland at the wheel, and uh, Bob Kaiser, the open division. Boy, it's good to see him running that well. He and Errol Lanier would like to see a consistent performance on the boat the way it's riding right now. And I'm sure it's interesting for Al Copeland getting back in the cockpit. Here's Super Hawaii, the diesel-powered deep V. They've got it turbocharged, of course. It gives it lots of boost, but they have to keep those RPMs up, and that means wider turns and uh, no throttling, per se. As we look at Totally Awesome with Randy Garcia and Elliot Sutton, you can see the navigator giving hand signals to his crew how they diagonally want to take that turn. And he looks back at the competition behind him. This is the first appearance of this boat this year. John Garrett not in exactly the place he wants to be. He's holding it back a little bit. His goal, of course, is to finish and to improve on the fourth and fifth place finish of the last two races so that he can keep that points edge going into the final round. It's another consistent run for the deep V boat, Lucky Strike, who went into this race in fifth place in class in points. You know, Art, we've had uh, some attrition rates, but not due to any debris that they predicted, more or less the engines. That's the irony of slick water. It looks so easy, but it sure can rev up an engine and uh, cause all kinds of problems. No problems for special edition. Out in front, looking for their first victory. Boy, would that be a happy moment. They'd get right back into that points race after Dirty Laundry got three straight wins to take over the top spot. It's a much bigger and heavier boat, and Smitty Smith told us about the disadvantages on this course. It's certainly disadvantage in the turns. Uh, John D'Elia's boat is quite light and uh, small, and he accelerates out of the turns very well. We're, uh, we'll have to play the cards and see how they come. The, the advantage that we possibly will have, if there's much trash in the river or something like that, our big 10 boat, we're not too concerned about damaging the boat itself with uh, trash. The, the drives and all are as suspect as his are, though. It looks like the cover is loose on the left side of the engine as they come down the back chute of this course. Meanwhile, we've got a battle between Risky Business and Team USA as the Popeye's high risk has dropped back. Let's go to Chopper 1 and Rich Lures. Rich? Uh, talk about a match set in P27 and P51. We've got uh, Steve Dorsich in the Risky Business and Alan Shapiro in the Team USA, and you can't get closer than this. Identical boat, skater holes, 32 feet with three Mercury 2.4s. And uh, the speed difference that you see is the speed difference that they have, about zero miles an hour at the moment. As we go northbound on the Hudson River, downwind, we're dealing in inches right now, uh, Jim, and it's uh, just that, inches and about 100 miles an hour, maybe 95 to 100 miles an hour. It's a bit muggy and uh, humid and, and slow today. The conditions are relatively slow for these boats as far as the air is concerned, but the water being so calm, they're all wide open. So you can see these two boats are set up to just about the same maximum speed. Very little separate the two.
And just, Alan Shapiro just, just barely, barely coming up on Steve Dorsich. The next turn uh, could mean two or three boat lengths to either one of them. I mean, this race will be won or lost. As if, it's go, if it goes the way it's going now, it'll be won or lost in the turns and the absolute straightness of the navigating down to the next checkpoint. All right, Rich Lewis, thank you very much. Stick with them in Chopper 1 as we get close to the conclusion of this race. Let's look at the leaderboard. Risky Business, Team USA, high risk and gone again in pro number one as we watch the two leaders battling right there. The adrenaline really has to be pumping to this crew. They're closing in on Team USA. The question is, Team USA has its problems engines-wise. Popeye's Diet Coke trying to catch up in that number two spot. And about two and a half laps to do it. We'll be back with more Superboat action from the Big Apple in New York in just a moment. The engine, but look at that average speed. About 60 mile an hour less than the first couple of laps when they had a 12 mile lead or led the field by six minutes. Meanwhile, it's going to be a challenge between these two boats. The top of your screen, it is the Popeye's Diet Coke, and here is Payless, Eric's Reality, and they're going to challenge for the lead very shortly. And Jim, they're both averaging 105 miles an hour. They're setting a scene for a tremendous drama at the finish. And a much improved Charlie Marks team, we ask him, what does he credit his improvement to? Basically, what is happening is, uh, in the beginning of the year with the loss of Bobby Moore, I became the boss. And I only knew one thing, and that was go fast. And that obviously didn't work. So as the year went on, you know, I told Dan from now on, you know, you throttle the boat. Dan started throttling the boat where he felt comfortable, and things started getting better. We're on the straightaway right now with Popeye's Diet Coke leading Payless Eric's reality. But as they go into turn one, we'll find that Marks cuts inside on the turns, taking up time and distance and recapturing the lead. This is a count and mouse game. Yes, it is. Johnny Marks takes a tighter turn as the Popeye's Diet Coke goes way wide and then slows down and loses some speed. Meanwhile, back in the race is Little Caesars, and they're in third place. Would you believe that? Amazing, after being almost down in the water. They might have to settle for third, though, if they catch up with everybody. They took a second in San Francisco, a third in Long Beach, and a third in the last race at Grand Haven. And moving up to a possible fourth place would be Popeye's Diet Coke. Al Copeland said it would be a dream to win this one, but he's happy to be back in the saddle, none the same. Here's Super Hawaii. They took a fourth in Miami, and of course, that time, uh, Fabio Buzzi came over from Italy to be the throttle man on the boat that he designed. Uh-oh. We have a problem with the boat almost sinking. It's been beached. Bobby Kaiser and Errol Lanier have beached the Gentry Turbo Eagle. That'll knock down the open class to just Two combatants, three are out. And this boat has the record holder for an average race of 109.4. It's had a speed of this lap of 109.7. So he's pretty near his record pace, running very well today. John D'Elia and his son, J.D. And hoping to close the gap before the last lap concludes is Dirty Laundry. Boy, they had such a close finish in New Orleans, probably the closest of any division in any race this year, and they won it again. In Pro 1, the leader is Risky Business, and they're showing them the short way around the course at an average better than 95 mile an hour. Here's a battle right behind Risky Business. Team USA and Popeye's High Risk. High Risk taking the lead right now. He takes over second place once again in class as we look at our fourth place boat gone again nigel hook and rick bowling in fourth place in pro one and this is the only wooden pro stock boat in the field here we go as the update we move to pro two conk attack out in front averaging better or close to 83 mile an hour and here is your leaderboard conk attack leading the rest of the fleet we still have that battle going on in the super boat the leader now We've just had word that Team USA, number 50, has gone off the course, is heading for the pits, so Payless is your leader right now as we come down to one more lap to go, and this race will be history in New York City. It's turned into a brand new drama, and we'll be back with the finish of the OPT Grand Prix from New York right after this. The offshore Grand Prix race, and we're battling for the lead between Payless Eric's Reality and the Popeyes Diet Coke. And Payless Eric's Reality, they really have to be feeling great now as we go down to the final lap, the final half of the final lap, I should say. 
after so many problems in the early going, four very disappointing appearances. Look at the distance here. They might be able to catch up. Taking the checkered flag for the first time in 1990, John DeLee and his son, J.T., and look at that victory clenched fist coming out of that cockpit as they win in open class. That's a great feeling. It knots up the points going into the final race of the season with Dirty Laundry and Special Edition. So down in Marathon, Florida, the championship will be decided. Oh, what an open division this year. And he called this his hometown waters of New York City. Special Edition winning at an average speed of 107.4 mile an hour in open class here in the Big Apple today. We've got ourselves an exciting finish right now in the Super Bowl division. Popeye's Diet Coke, it looks like they have the power, Jim. And they're on the inside. They've crossed lanes and looks as though Charlie Marks has had a problem. He slowed way down and look at who's going to take the checker flag for the second time in 1990 after winning at Long Beach. It'll be a finish for Popeye's Diet Coke. Chuck Norris and Denny Hedger, the throttle man, and look, they have the hatch open. I don't know if that's on purpose, hydraulically operated, to get more air in the engine, or it's just flowing up. It doesn't matter. They're going to take the checker flag and win this OPT Grand Prix at 103.9 average mile per hour. And that also tightens the points race going into the final race of the Super Boat Division. A happy crew as they ran out of gas after the finish line. They weren't the only ones to run out of gas either. The open division winners, the Delias ran out of gas. Jim's in the pits with those winners right now. A happy John Delia and his son JD as they take over first place, at least a tie in points, but we're gonna find out about that in the open class of OPT. First of all, John, there's a different ruling in OPT. Are you in first place? Yeah, we, we are in first place. If the circuit ended right now, the way the OPT scoring system is, whoever goes to, fur whoever goes to furthest, if you have a tie in points, wins the series. We've gone a few more miles in dirty laundry because in the beginning of the year, they had some mechanical problems. They didn't finish a few races. So if the circuit ended today, we'd be in first place. But we know we're in a tie. We got one more race. We're looking forward to to race and head-to-head -head with Joe Mock and, and Smitty again. We've raced them all year. It's been a, been a heck of a series right down to the wire. We're gonna, it's going to be some race and marathon. I, can, I hope and pray we'll be on the boat again doing another interview with another checkered flag. It's long overdue. This is New York City, our home port. So we're real happy. J.D., you ran out of gas like Chuck Norris's boat did. I mean, is that far to taxi out there? Well, when you, we cut it pretty close to get a maximum speed, so... Uh, I guess we did our homework right. Just as I turned him off at the finish line, that was it. I couldn't start him again. We'll be back with the winners of the Super Bowl class right after this. Art promoting his latest movie all week is now a winner again. A happy crew, of course, Chuck Doris, I can't believe it, the Big Apple. And now you're within 83 points at one last race, wins it all. Whoever wins the marathon, that's it. Yeah, so we're, uh, we're real happy with the race today. Dennis did a phenomenal job throttling, played a fantastic uh, game out there, especially against Charlie Marks, because it was a nip and tuck all the way. It was uh, switching back and forth from first to second place out there. And Charlie Marks said that never let it be said, an actor can't drive a boat. He said you rode a heck of a race. <laughs> well, that's nice of him to say. We were, he kept beating me on the turns. But you I, figured it out, he said. Yeah, yeah, so I figured I can't uh, keep going wide around him because he kept cutting inside of me. And so I had to go wide around him. I said, if I keep doing that, because every time he'd get a jump on me by about 100 yards. So finally on the last one, I decided to cut inside. So as he went around, I cut right inside of him there and swamped his boat. <laughs> and uh, so we, a little wet, he said. Yeah, we got a little wet. But uh, that's what kept us ahead of him. Now tell me, Denny, you, you rode good throttles, as Chuck said, but you ran out of gas. Right after we finished the race, we stopped to get the checkered flag, and that was it. She was done for the day. One minute after we finished the race and turned around to get the checkered flag, we ran out. Talk about playing it close. That's as close as you want to get. <laughs> Super competitive action and lots of competitive action in the other divisions as well. For instance, Pro 1, where Risky Business not only won the race, but also takes over the points lead. Let's get out of the winner's dock and Jim. One more race to go. That'll be at Marathon, Florida. And you go in, Steve Dorsich, with two straight wins at Michigan and here in New York. You go down in first place in class. Yeah, that's right, Jim. We're, uh, we're working real hard at this. So uh, we're hoping for a number one there in uh, Marathon. You know, it wasn't as smooth as they thought it would be. Well, it was smooth uh, on the, on the uh, New York side. But uh, New Jersey, it was a little hair rough. We got through it all right. 
In Pro 2, four boats average better than 83 miles an hour, and the winner, Cock Attack, with the best speed, of course, 85.1. Looking at our points right now through this race, with one more race to go, in excess leads Popeyes by 84 points, with an outside chance with one more race to go, Little Caesars with only 219 points off of the leader's pace. And you can't get any closer than this. The open division, all knotted up, special edition and dirty laundry, slim fast, is 200 points down. It's the two-crew race going into the final one of the season. At a 14-point difference, the tightest in OPT standings in any class, risky business leading over high risk. And Great Adventure maintained their lead over misbehaving with a finish here today. For our offshore fans, next on the OPT ESPN television coverage, the national championships from Marathon, Florida. And all the marbles on the deck for at least two classifications in that one, followed by the Worlds. We are saddened to report at this time the sport of offshore racing recently lost a hero. Two-time UIM one open class world champion Stefano Casaraghi lost his life at sea during a racing competition in Monaco. Casaraghi was a fierce competitor and a gentleman. He will be missed. Thousands watch from the shoreline from the skyscrapers here in Manhattan and on the New Jersey side the spectator boat fleet was huge. Lots of action, Art. A beautiful day, great racing. What a way for offshore racing to return to the city of New York after being gone for seven years. Our deckman for Jim Hendrick saying thank you for being with us. The 1990 Ultra Slim Fast OPT Offshore New York Grand Prix has been sponsored by Ultra Slim Fast. Ultra Slim Fast, the safe, healthy way to lose weight fast. Samsonite, our strengths are legendary. And by Popeye's Famous Fried Chicken and Biscuits. This has been a production of IPI.